Okay, so in gram-gram stoichiometry, these have been three-step problems. The first fraction of the three steps helped you to convert a mass in grams to moles of that substance. So that first fraction, which was grams of a substance, took you to moles of that substance. And this is where you had one mole over some number of grams that came from the periodic table. Okay. The second fraction took you from moles of that first substance to moles of the new substance. So moles of the old substance to moles of the new substance. And these numbers came from the balanced equation coefficients. The third fraction took you from moles of this new substance to grams of this new substance. So here you would have had one mole of the new substance having some number of grams of that substance, and of course that comes from the periodic table. So gram-gram stoichiometry was when you took, you had mass of a, of, a, of a substance, and you had to convert it to mass of a different substance. So for example, if we have this equation here, 2H2 plus 1O2 turning into two waters. If you started with 64 grams of oxygen, and I asked you to find the number of grams of hydrogen. You would set this up as a problem in the usual way, 64 grams of O2. The first fraction, grams of O2 goes in the denominator, one mole of O2 goes in the numerator, and from the periodic table, the mass adds up to 32 grams. So this first fraction converts grams of O2 to moles of O2. If you stopped the problem here, since grams of O2 cancel, your unit now is in moles of O2. But we're not trying to find moles of O2, we're trying to find grams of hydrogen. So now that we are in moles of O2, now we can use the coefficients, which represent a mole ratio, to convert from moles of O2 to moles of hydrogen. So the middle fraction, we'll put moles of O2 in the denominator, so it will cancel, and moles of H2 in the numerator, because that's what we're, we have to convert to hydrogen. So the coefficients from the balanced equation, this mole-to-mole -mole ratio, 2 from right here, 1 from right here. If we were to stop the problem right here, moles of O2 cancel, and our unit, if we stopped here would be moles of hydrogen. But we're trying to find grams of hydrogen. So one more fraction, moles of H2 in the denominator, grams of H2 in the numerator. This is a periodic table, molar mass. One mole of H2 is 2.0 grams of hydrogen. So here at this point, moles of H2 cancel. And we now have uh, grams as our unit, and so the math 64 divided by 32, which is 2, times 2, which is 4, times 2 again, which is 8, okay, to three significant figures because 64.0 was three significant figures, and we'll have 8.00 grams of hydrogen, okay. So that's mole mole, or that's gram gram stoichiometry. But now I'm going to introduce some problems to you which are considered to be variable stoichiometry, meaning that you will use fewer than the three steps. Okay, So here's the thing. If I had given you the number of, if I give you grams of the old substance, the original substance, not old, it's not old, it's original, okay, then you're starting out with the first fraction of the three-step problem, okay. If you're given grams of original and you have to go to moles of the new substance, okay, think about that in this three-step problem. If I give you grams of the original, like let's say I give you grams of oxygen right here, and I asked you not to find grams of oxygen, but I asked you to find moles of oxygen. Okay. In this case, you would do 64.0 grams of oxygen.
and it would still start out, this problem would start out the same way. One mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams, so right now this first fraction converted grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. We would then set up the second fraction, which would convert moles of oxygen to moles of hydrogen. And so this is the coefficients 2 over 1. This problem stops here. If I give you grams of the original substance and I ask you to find moles of the new substance, that's here. That stops here. Everything else is going to cancel. All right. So in this case, you would have 4 moles of H2. Okay. So if grams of original is given to you and you have to find moles of the new, you're doing the first two fractions. But what if you are given moles of the original and I ask you to find grams of the new substance? Okay. Well, in this case, this is effectively like I've done the first fraction for you because remember the goal of the first fraction is to give you is, converts grams to moles of that original substance. So if I give you moles of the original substance, I've already done the first fraction for you. So in this problem up above, if I had instead, if I didn't give you grams of oxygen, if I gave you two moles of oxygen to start with, okay, you don't have to do this first fraction. It's already converted to moles, so you wouldn't do this first fraction in this problem. You jump right to the second fraction which is moles of O2 in the denominator and moles of H2 on the top. And those are the coefficients from the balanced equation. Okay. You would continue on with the third fraction, the third step, which is moles of H2 to grams of H2, because that's what you're trying to find is grams of the new substance. And so that's periodic table. Okay. So here, in this case, you have um, 2 moles times 2 times 2 giving you 8.00 grams of hydrogen. Okay, So be careful when you're reading these problems that you know where you're starting and you know where you're going. There's not always going to be three steps. Okay, So let's take a look at this problem on problem set number three, number one. How many moles of carbon monoxide are needed to produce 360 grams of CH3OH? The quantity given? is 360 grams to three significant figures of the methanol. We want to know how many moles of carbon monoxide. So starting our problem, 360 grams of CH3OH. Grams of CH3OH are in the denominator. All right. And so grams, the first thing we're going to have to do, if I give you grams, you're going to start the problems like normal. You're doing a molar mass conversion where you're converting grams of methanol to moles of methanol. Adding this up in the periodic table, one carbon, three hydrogens, well actually four hydrogens and one oxygen adds up to 32 grams. If you stop the problem here, grams have canceled leaving you with moles of CH3OH. But we want moles of carbon monoxide. So we have to do the second fraction where moles of CH3OH is in the denominator, so it'll cancel, and moles of the new substance, CO, is in the numerator. The balanced equation is a one-to-one -one ratio of these two substances, so we would stop the problem here. Moles of CH3OH cancel. Our final unit here that we're left with is moles of CO, which is what we're looking for. So this problem, we don't have to convert our final number into grams. So the math becomes 360 divided by 32, and that works out to 11.3 moles of CO. All right, let's take a look at part B. Calculate the number of grams of hydrogen needed to produce 4.00 moles of methanol. So 4.00 moles is given. We're trying to find X number of grams of hydrogen. So 4.00 moles of CH3OH. Now, in a three-step problem, in a three-step problem, you're always starting with grams. But we're not starting with grams, so that tells you right away this is not a three-step problem. So you're not going to start it like a three-step problem. 
So the first thing to do is to get rid of moles of CH3OH, and you're going to convert it to, not to grams, this is the thing that people often try to do. You're skipping the first step. I've already given you the answer to the problem as if you'd done the first step already. So we're going directly to the second step, which is moles to moles. So moles of CHO3 is now going to be converted to moles of H2. And this is, uh, the numbers that go in here are 2 and 1, and that comes from the balanced equation. If I stop the problem here, moles cancel, leaving us with moles of H2. But we're trying to find grams of H2, so one more fraction. One mole of H2 is 2.0 grams of H2. And this black spot is just a uh, stray mark. So moles of H2 cancel. The math becomes rather simple here. 4 times 2 times 2 is 16.0 grams of H2. Okay. All right, I would like you to try part C right here. Recognizing you're starting with moles and you're trying to go to grams. So 2.85 moles of carbon monoxide, but you're trying to find grams of the hydrogen. So pause the video right now, set up your work, and then come back for an answer check. All right, for 1C, you should have the answer 11.4 grams of H2. Here's the setup. Again, this was a problem much like 1B, where when you're given moles to start, you skip the first conversion fraction. Okay. Let's take a look at B and C, 2 B and C on the next page. How many moles of NH3 are required to produce 180 grams of HF? So you are given 180 grams of this stuff, and you're asked to, be to find X number of moles of NH3. Okay, So in this problem, you're starting with grams of one substance, and you're going to moles of the next substance. When you're starting with grams, the problem will start out like a gram-gram stoichiometry problem. So pause the video. Now. Okay, so now 2B, you see the answer of 3.00 moles of NH3. You started the problem as a regular gram-gram stoichiometry problem where first you converted grams of HF to moles of HF. The second fraction, you use the mole ratio from the balanced equation, but you did not have to do step number three, which was convert moles back to grams because I was asking you to tell me about moles of NH3. All right, let's take a look at part C. How many grams of N2F4 can be produced from 7.5 moles of F2. So 7.5 moles of F2, trying to find grams of N2F4. Okay, so this problem, you're starting with moles. When you're starting with moles, you are skipping the first conversion fraction and picking up with the ratio from the balanced equation. So uh, try this problem, pause the video, come back for an answer check. Pause the video now. All right, so for part C, the answer is 156 grams of N2F4. And we can see here that when you started with moles of F2, we did not have to convert it to moles because I already gave you moles. So you're skipping the first conversion fraction and picking up with the coefficients from the balanced equation, which is the mole-mole conversion seen here. And then the last step is to take moles of the new substance and convert it to grams in a molar mass conversion. All right, so here you go. Uh, these, this is how you do what I call variable stoichiometry, where it's not the straight three-step gram-gram stoichiometric problems. All right, come see me if you have any further questions, and we'll see you in the classroom.